There is one lyric of yours that troubles me. Which one? Pussy tastes like cantaloupe. Sugar baby watermelon like you from the coast. What's wrong with it? You have no idea why that might be troubling to me. <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me. You have no clue. What are you are you taking it literal like the cantaloupe is in the vagina or what are you, how are you taking this? I don't know. It's this is like a it's a metaphor. First of all, I don't think you even like cantaloupe. No, but the, the, the whole point of it is that it tastes good like a fruit. But our vagina is supposed to taste like fruit. Our per, no, but you know the feeling you feel when you eat a, like a fruit? And our it feels great. Our vagina is <laughs> supposed to taste like fruit. I feel like you don't understand poetic justice here. <laughs> it's not poetry. <laughs> it, it is. It is. It's a double, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a metaphor. What are vaginas supposed to taste like? They, they just taste like... Vaginas. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes good, like fruit. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Fruits are sugary. Yeah, I get it. If you actually put a cantaloupe over there, you're probably going to throw off your pH. I get that. But I'm not literally saying that you're putting cantaloupe in your vagina. Yeah, but we shouldn't also strive either to have vaginas that taste like fruit. We should strive to have vaginas that taste like natural, balanced vaginas. Which can taste good and give you the feeling. Yeah, but you didn't say, I swear your pussy, pussy, okay, well, pussy. Okay, well, that's not feels like the feeling you get tastes like the feeling That's you get too many words to, <laughs> to do like you know i'm asking for a creative edit here i think you could work with me okay well, change the line how would you say it i swear your pussy 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 tastes like the feeling i get when i eat fruit however i am satisfied with the fact that it tastes like a vagina because that's what it actually is What's going on everybody? I am popping in to let you know that this video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a powerful, beautiful online presence today and run that business you've been wanting to start. So if you haven't checked them out, go over to squarespace.com slash and start playing around for free. And when you're ready to launch, just go to squarespace.com slash and give that business a shot. Now back to the video. I know that I said less Jared in the last video, but I had to drag him back for that one because cantaloupe, we're moving out of the era that told us that our vaginas need to smell and taste like flowers and fruits. And instead, we are embracing the fact that our natural balanced scent is where it's at. And when we talk about balance, we're speaking of pH. But what exactly is pH? So pH stands for power of hydrogen. When we talk about pH, we're talking about a scale that measures hydrogen concentration of fluids, specifically bodily fluids in this case. And this scale goes from zero, which is very acidic, to 14, which is very basic, very alkaline. So for vagina owners, especially those who are younger, under around 50 years or so, your ideal pH is between 3.8 to 4.5. People whose vagina is within the normal pH range for their body. If you are outside of that range and you notice that there is a very strong odor or a drastic change in color, your first stop is to go to the doctors or OBGYN. Everyone else, you can keep listening. The number one thing to note about the smell and taste of your vagina is the biggest influence is something that we often don't have a hands-on role in, and that is your menstrual cycle. As you go through the different phases, you're gonna notice different scents. So while you're on your period, there might be more of a metallic taste. Different times, it might be sweeter. Sometimes it might be more tart. During ovulation, the vaginal scent and taste is actually at its muskiest. And we often don't think of the word musky as positive when it comes to our genitals, but as as studies will show you that musky scent can do some magical things for your life. And I think that's important to note because again, this is a part of embracing the fact that the vagina smells good. It doesn't have to smell different in order to be good. The actual scent of the vagina is really, really pleasing. All right, so when it comes to things that you can do to impact the smell and taste of your vagina, Yes, what you put in does impact what comes out. So being conscious of the foods that you're eating and how much water you're drinking can play a role. Now, how much of a role? An easy way to assess this is by gauging the smell of your sweat and of your pee. So if you notice a certain food is changing those things, it is likely changing your taste as well. So nutrient-dense foods are obviously most ideal. Drinking tons of
times of water is obviously most ideal. You know this from your pee. The times you barely drink water, it is a very strong, very pungent result that you get. When you drink a lot of water, it's a lot more mellow. Same goes for your vagina. It's also about what you don't put into your body, and that is processed foods or foods, again, that you notice for your particular body makeup make your sweat and your pee smell or taste a way that you don't find favorable. And in addition, it's always helpful to be mindful of how much tobacco and alcohol you're consuming. And if you notice that you have a more stale, more bitter taste and smell, try thinking about cutting back a little bit in those areas. I do wanna say a note about eating certain foods in order to taste better on date night or play night, whatever you wanna call it. I don't think there's any harm in downing two cartons of pineapples if you feel like that makes you taste better because placebo to me is half of the magic. A big part of having an enjoyable experience with someone is confidence, feeling good about your body and also just feeling more busted wide open worthy. And if those foods help you do that, that is gonna make the sex better, that's gonna make the experience better, and if you are acting like I taste incredible, I am incredible, your partner will also buy into it. So to me, it does work. Whatever your thing is that you feel personally, personally, I feel like apple cider vinegar does that for me. I've never read any studies that really back that up, but it gives me that, it gives me this feeling, so I do it. So whatever your thing is, if it's healthy, do it. The second thing you can do to impact the taste of your vagina is to clean your vulva. Please notice that I'm differentiating between vagina and vulva. Vagina is the canal, vulva is all the outer parts that you see. So we don't clean the vagina, we don't clean our uterus or try to get to our cervix. We acknowledge that's a self-cleaning system that doesn't need our help, so no douching ever. You already knew that, I don't gotta repeat it, but no douching ever, just in case you didn't know that. But the vulva, however, can definitely use your help. So you might notice like a white secretion that builds up around your folds and your labia minora and that is just a mix of sweat, dead skin cells, and vaginal secretions that dry over time. These are not bad things, but when they're built up over time, it can get unpleasant. So you wanna make sure with warm water and a washcloth, you don't need anything else. If you choose to use a light scented soap or a light scented cleanser, that is your business, but you don't need those things. Just warm water, cleaning around the folds, using the cloth to remove any of that white residue that exists can definitely do things in the right direction. Cleaning under the clitoral hood could also be helpful, but again, be very sensitive because those are very sensitive parts. You don't need to go up inside of the vagina, but cleaning the folds around the vaginal opening can also be helpful. A couple last tips to get the best out of your vagina. Try to wear cotton underwear as much as possible. Studies show that synthetic materials can cause more BV and vaginal infections, and so go cotton as much as you comfortably can. I get it, sometimes we have our latex nights, and a couple nights isn't gonna hurt you. In addition, try to hold everything that goes into your vagina to the same standards we're discussing today. Make sure that they are properly clean, whether that be sex toys or birth control or another body. You know, holding that person to a standard of cleanliness that you hold yourself. And if you are having unprotected sex with someone um, and their bodily fluids are coming into contact with yours, you can ask questions about what's going into their body or who they're sharing their body with because that can definitely impact things. I know for myself, I had a partner whom I just never got into a balance or a flow. My body never got into a balance or flow with them. And a lot of that had to do with, one, what they put into their body, and two, who else they were sharing their body with. So feel empowered to ask those questions if you're at that space of comfort with someone. Now let's do a quick troubleshoot list. Here are some things that could be making your vagina smell or taste worse. Washing inside the vagina. Using scented soaps down there. Using flavored condoms during penetrative sex or on sex toys. Incorporating food into oral sex play and not cleaning up properly afterwards, like really properly. Leaving a tampon or cup in for too long. For example, eight hours or more. And the last thing that could possibly be making your vagina smell and taste funky is stress. Stress. And I think that this is particularly interesting because in many cases, the stress of a smelly and funky vagina 
activates the possibility for a smelly and funky vagina. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the more that we buy into this idea that uh, we are fishy and that we are bad tasting and that we are disgusting, and the more we stress out about it, the more likely that is to be true. Now, there are particular glands that activate when we are stressed out. And these glands are not there for bad reasons. They're there to help us cool down and also to relieve anxiety. But when those glands and the milky fluid they produce mix with our natural balance scent, it can make things a little bit more stale and odorous. So to end this video off, let's do a guided stress de-stress meditation. Your creator, the universe, nature, has your back. Your body is the bomb. What comes out of your body is perfect. It is what is intentional to come out of your body. It is attractive. It is sumptuous. It is glorious. Enjoy it. Bask in it. And if there are other people who are so lucky to get close enough to do those things as well, hold them to that standard. Make sure that they understand that this temple has beautiful gifts to offer. And if you don't know how to receive those gifts as they are coming, then you need to go. Listen, if you watched any videos on this channel before, then you know we are huge fans of Squarespace. Why? Well, for one, it's easy to use, even for me who has no idea how to code. With Squarespace, I get that custom look that looks stunning. They also have really in-depth analytics where you can gain powerful insights about your site visitors and how they interact with your content. And they have so much more. And I just want you to go see it for yourself. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Don't I give you that rush? Keep that loving raw. Don't need no candlelight, cause you feel like the morning sun. There ain't no end in sight. Put that shit on my life. This ain't no.